We are now honored to introduce Constant Van Ayrshot, the Director for Asia Pacific of the Business World Business Council for Sustainable Development. Constant will be joining us through live stream from my hometown of Singapore to present the Circular Economy Indicators. Let's welcome Constant. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. I guess I can start. I, I don't see many of you. Should I start? Hi, Constant. Please feel free to start. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, everyone. So my name is uh, Constant Van Ershot. I'm based in Singapore, and I represent the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to deliver <clears throat> this uh, talk about circular economy indicators. Uh, so I will. Uh, these are <clears throat> metrics on circular economy that have been developed by business and for business. Uh, just let me briefly introduce uh, the organization for those who are not so familiar with the WBCSD, it's a hor horrible acronym, <clears throat> but basically it's a nonprofit organization that was founded 25 years ago, uh, made out of uh, big large corporations <clears throat> working together collaboratively in a pre-competitive space to drive the agenda on sustainability and business. We are a global organization with members spanning across the world. We are CEO led, that means <clears throat> our members are the CEO of those large corporations. And as I said, we are a unique business platform for collaboration where companies share experience and learn from each other. We are also market driven. We believe that sustainability provides business opportunity, it future-proofs uh, business going forward, given the, the challenges ahead. You can see here <clears throat> our members, and uh, three members are based in, in uh, Hong Kong, New World Development, who is currently hosting uh, this event, CLP and Jardine Matheson. The others you can see uh, across uh, the world <clears throat> uh, from very different business sectors. So at WBCSD, we have <clears throat> six programs. One is, is circular economy, which I'm going to talk about, but five others, <clears throat> which concerns cities and mobility, climate and energy, food and nature, people, everything to do with the social capital and redefining value. Redefining value is a very important program. That's why it's in the center. It is the effort for uh, stock markets and investors to recognize companies uh, that perform well on ESG and actually reward them by lowering the cost of capital or having your higher uh, stock and valuation on stock markets. So uh, in, the, in a circular economy work stream <clears throat> or program, <clears throat> we have six work streams. Uh, and I will talk about the metrics today. The other one is policy. Uh, what uh, sh should policies look like to uh, promote uh, the use of uh, circularity? Uh, and then uh, industry sector deep dives on circular economy in the automotive, bioeconomy, e-waste and built environment. Uh, this topic <coughs> of circular economy is very, is very important, uh, especially for Hong Kong and Singapore because of the land constraints that we are in and the limits of landfill. So having this, uh, you know, looking at circular economy is extremely important. The whole <coughs> journey started uh, on our end, started uh, from this statistic <coughs> that the world is only 9% circular today. 
That means 91% is we take, we use, and we throw away. So this cannot go on, as you can imagine. And uh, so we asked, <clears throat> we started by doing uh, a landscape analysis to say, okay, uh, what is out there already in a topic of circular economy? Why do you want to measure your level of circularity? And who is your target audience on circularity? And you can see the results of the survey that we conducted. That was, that's now three years ago. And, and the reason why companies want to measure the level of circularity is to drive business performance and strategy justify achievements and integrate uh, across businesses. And <clears throat> the target audience is clearly the top management followed by employees and customers and less so investors and regulators. But I think the regulate, regulation part will probably increase going forward. And then we ask also questions on <clears throat> what do you measure and how do you measure? And 100% and of companies that have been surveyed said, we are all measuring material flow. We also measure energy and water as a, and of course emissions uh, to some extent. And then we ask them, how do you measure? And that's where the big surprise came. Three quarter of respondents said they are using their own framework. And that's a problem both for comparison, uh, consistency, and also on the policy side. If you want to have meaningful policies, you need to be able to rely on, on a system or a standard on how companies measure and report the level of circularity. The same applies when you look at greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, the greenhouse gas protocol <clears throat> has been developed so that there is a consistency <clears throat> Uh, in terms of reporting so that you know, meaningful policies can be developed and incentives. So that's why the circular metrics project started. And <clears throat> since we are a collaborative platform, we have had interests and we brought together those 28 companies. And each of them <clears throat> provided their own experts to help develop what we call the standard on circular economy. We also have an advisory group uh, that's very important to make sure that whatever we come up with in terms of standard setting, that it is accepted by the stakeholder by stakeholders. So the metrics have an objective is to provide an, at a company level the drive to the transition towards circular economy by encouraging businesses to adopt circular business models to improve longevity and resilience of the company. And it's very important to follow very, uh, those four principles. First, it needs to be simple. Not, you know, it should not be too complicated to uh, apply. It needs to be consistent so that you can see progress over time. It needs to be complete within the boundaries of uh, what you what companies are trying to assess. Very importantly, it needs to, to be complementary to whatever other tool already exists or reporting. And it needs to be neutral uh, without being biased towards one product or one material or one component. So that's uh, the basic of how it goes. And so we have published this in January uh, this uh, report it can be downloaded from our uh, website. Uh, and I will just go through uh, the mechanic and some principles. First point I want to make is that <clears throat> circular economy is a value chain effort. I used to work for Lafarge, Lafarge which became Lafarge Holcim, and it was relatively easy within the company boundaries to be 100% circular. For gypsum uh, boards, if some gypsum boards were not up to scratch for, for quality, they would destroy them and reuse them within the production process. 
So this is not what we are talking about. It is not only at company level. It must be a value chain effort. And the aim is <clears throat> to extract uh, as few as possible non-renewable virgin resources and to minimize incineration and landfill. And you see here the value chain, very simple value chain, which uh, is, is the linear model. And uh, if you have to have the beginning and end goal, then you see that something needs to happen in between. So, so the, these are actions <clears throat> that uh, companies along the value chain can actually do to increase the level of circularity of whatever is being sourced from virgin resources. So some can discard, many discard to collectors and reprocessors, and then it goes back in the biosphere and then it can go back into renewable resources, or it can, can, can go directly to your suppliers or, or clients through recycle, reuse, repair, or refurbish. So there are a lot of action points that you can do, but what is very important here is uh, to be successful in circular economy, it is a complex undertaking because you have to talk to your clients and suppliers. And the methodology behind the standard is this one. It looks at the company boundary, but measures linear inflow of non-renewable virgin resources and how much of uh, resources are being purchased, if you want, from circular inflow. And then within the company boundary, uh, it looks at the design of, of the product that you're making and what is the recovery potential. If you design a product that you can not, cannot easily be dismantled and, and go back into a circular outflow, that means that this percentage will be low. And then the calculation uh, going out is circular outflow and then the linear outflow that goes to waste streams. So that's the basic methodology logic behind this calculation, this standard. And <clears throat> when we talk about indicators, uh, we are talking about uh, those type of indicators those, the close the loop indicators, which calculates a circular inflow, how much of your purchasing does come from circular sources, how much of the waste is actually going, finds its way back into new products uh, and manufacturing, water circularity and renewable energy. Then the second type of indicators is how to optimize the loop. <clears throat> so optimizing the loop here, we look at two indicators. One is how critical a very specific material is. And the second one is what type of recovery are we talking about? I'll go into more details. And then the last one is, is the value of the loop. Here is a financial uh, indicators uh, on how much of um, the revenue comes from circular material or from linear materials. And then the structure of the, of the standard is, is like this. It's a seven step approach First one is you have to, de to define the boundaries of what you want to do. And it's whether it's a business unit level, at product level. And the number one is very important to define the boundaries and ask the right question you want to have answered because that's where you also define which suppliers and clients you have to include in your circular metric calculation. Number two, you have to select the indicators, the ones I just mentioned earlier. Step number three is to collect uh, data. 
identify the sources as much as possible and to collect the data of the uh, question you want to be to, to answer. <clears throat> then you can perform the calculation themselves. And here for, for this step, uh, there is a software uh, that is also available uh, in our uh, package, if you want, in our work streams. Uh, and then we can analyze the results and then prioritize and identify the opportunities. And then, of course, you have to implement. So quite a standard kind of way of applying uh, a guidance. So I will just go into detail to give you a, a flavor of how to calculate your indicators. So the close the loop indicator is, remember, the circular percentage of circular inflow versus outflow. And then the standard is actually defining uh, what should be included uh, in, in the calculation. It looks simple, but it's important. And it's important to know that we are talking about the weight uh, in circular uh, indicators. And then once you uh, go to the uh, circular inflow, you have the, you need to know how much is coming from renewable and how much is coming from non-virgin content. Circular outflow, again, uh, so you have to look down the value chain on how, how what is the potential of recovery of your product? Is this easily recyclable? And then you have to have data on how much of it is actually recovered. So this gives you then the recovery potential and the actual recovery. So, so, so these, these are the indicators and the software will help you uh, do this uh, in, in a relatively simple way. And then you have also water and energy, you know, how much water uh, are you going to reuse in your processes? Uh, so this will come uh, in the next version of the standard, which uh, will be published uh, early next year. And the same for energy. Again, here we did not want to have too many because many companies already report on their water and energy consumption. So this should be additional uh, to, to whatever reporting companies are doing already. The second block of indicators is to optimize the loop. So here we're looking, looking at critical materials. How much of it, uh, it so what, well, basically you have to define what is critical for you. What, what, for, for example, what materials are, are scarce compared to, uh, or, or you know, in, in risk of disruption of supply would be a critical material divided by the total mass of linear inflow. Uh, and the reason why we do this is you see on the right hand side, you have a lot of loops that can be uh, developed from remanufacturing, re recycling, uh, et cetera, reuse or repair. So this uh, is the origin of the critical materials. You can map it if you want. Uh, to see how critical some of the materials in your calculation are. The last indicator is a, is a circular business performance. And that's what I said earlier, is to look at the, you divide your revenue uh, of the company divided by the mass of linear inflow. So that you see how dependent your production is from material inflow whether you can increase uh, the revenue uh, from renewable materials. To help you do, perform the calculation, uh, there is a CTI online tool, so circular transition indicators tool, and I will just show you briefly how, how it works. And this is really to help you 
compute the calculations. And it follows the seven steps, as you see. <clears throat> What's important is define the scope, whether you're looking at a particular site, a production, a business level, or a very specific product. Then the step number two is which indicators you are interested in, whether, uh, and then you select the indicators. And then the step number three is uh, you start to collect data from inflow, outflow, energy, and water. Uh, of course, here, you, <clears throat> for example, for wood, uh, if you want, wood is a renewable source, but it needs to be, it needs to come from FSC or PFC uh, source material because uh, it needs to come from sustainable source production. So wood only is not sufficient to say it comes from renewable sources. But again, <clears throat> there is a guidance and a lot of Q&A and a lot of information that helps actually make the selection of, of the right data. So uh, again, the critical materials, which critical materials are part of your company of the inflow. And here uh, you can select you know, the region where a material is coming from, whether it's uh, rare metals or scarce uh, materials. And then the last, well, the, the important part <clears throat> is you have to use uh, the value chain approach. So the tool is designed to get input from suppliers. So uh, you can give access to suppliers so that the suppliers for a particular component of your product can actually uh, add the, the, the data that you may not have uh, in, in your part of the value chain. And at the end, you, uh, you, you receive uh, a report like this and you, you, you see the headlines, the inflow analysis, where you can see which part <clears throat> is, is renewable, which part is renewable and non-virgin, which one is virgin, which one is recovered. So by, by the uh, um, source of material. Uh, and then you can, you can set targets yourself. Say, okay, you can do, uh, you say, well, if I take this type of material or this type of component or uh, how will my performance actually change? And then once you, once you know this, then you can actually set targets for a particular product or at company level. You say, well, today I've made an assessment. Uh, I'm 11% circular. Then the management can say, well, I want to have 15%. And then you can look at you know, how to achieve this by doing a bit of scenario uh, and design analysis to be able to, to reach a certain target. And on the right side, you see, you see the outflow analysis. And that, that's a tricky part because you have to, to talk to your clients and try to follow uh, where your material actually ends up. Being recyclable <clears throat> or reused does not mean that it is recycled and that it is being reused. So that's why you know, the supply chain effort is, is absolutely critical. Then we have, we publish also case studies. So the more companies uh, engage in calculating uh, for certain products, you know, the level, level of circularity. And if they wish to publish uh, those, uh, we are more than happy to actually provide those case study. And uh, some are available online. So you can see there is one report called Circular Transition Indicators Case Studies. So companies like DSM and Whirlpool are already uh, working on this and many others, of course. But these are some of the case studies that are available. Uh, thank you for listening. And I would like just to finish with uh, uh, one element. So you, there is a CTI Academy. Uh, you have the links here. Uh, there is training on how to use the tool in more detail. Uh, and you can download the report and uh, the CTI land, land landing page where you go directly uh, into the, um, the CTI tool if you want. And I hope 
uh, that Singapore and Hong Kong will you know, continue the effort in, in moving towards a more circular economy. With this, I thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>